We are infinite. Wow. <laughs> I'm such a mess. What a lot of people to the internet. My name is Kevin and welcome back to another video. Okay guys, so for today's video I am doing another reading for the first time reading vlog. But it's for a standalone book that... I still to this day have just never read, I've never seen the movie and it's one that every time I mention I've never seen it or read it, people are always like, how? Like how haven't you read this? How haven't you seen it? And I'm like, I just haven't. So that book is, as you've probably seen on the title and everything, is The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Shabosky. Now one thing I do want to mention is that this was not on my school curriculum when I was going to school. I wish it was because this is a book I want to read voluntarily and when I was in school all of the books we were meant to read I never wanted to read them so I would have loved for this to be one of my books that I had to read for school because this is one I'm reading now as an adult for like voluntarily you know so I would have loved this to be on my curriculum but it just wasn't when I was in school. And like somehow I have not once been spoiled for this book or movie. I literally know nothing about it or what happens. I know it's sad. That's all I've heard. Like people have always said, oh, you're going to sob whenever you read it or watch it. That's all I know. I don't know why it's sad, but I know it's sad. And then also I just know that like Logan Lerman plays the main character in the movie and Emma Watson's also in the movie. That's about it. That's as much as my knowledge goes for the perks of being a wallflower. There's actually a very funny story before I go into more of this that I actually want to talk about because I met Stephen Shabosky at Book Expo America last year in 2019 and I met him. I got an advanced reader copy of his new book at the time, Imaginary Friend, got it signed, got a photo with him. I'll include the photo here. It was great. But like when I was talking to him as he was signing my book and everything, he was like talking to me. I was saying, oh, I'm excited to read this book because I was. Unfortunately, I ended up DNFing it, but that's besides the point. And I was just saying like how I was excited to read it and stuff like that. And he was like signing it for me. He was like, oh, I really hope that you enjoy it. Like I really spent so much time working on it. I really hope that you're gonna enjoy it. And then he was like, I'm assuming you're a fan of Perkins being a wallflower. And I could not stand there looking the man in the eye and tell him no, that I had not read the book or seen the movie. So I full on lied to Stephen Shabosky. I was literally like, yep, love that book so much. And then he put a quote on my book, like of Imaginary Friend. I'm actually gonna go find it. He actually put a quote from Perks of Being a Walter in it as he signed my book to me. And I have no idea what the quote is about because I lied to Stephen Shabosky saying I had read his book. So that's one of the finer things in life that I'm not proud of, but I literally could not tell him that I hadn't read it. Like I literally could not do that. Anyways, here is my copy of Imaginary Friend, his arc. And literally, as I said, on the front of it, it says, Kevin, my real, not my imaginary friend, his signature. And then down at the bottom, P.S. You are infinite. I know that that's from The Perks of Being a Wallflower, but I don't understand it. I just wanted to talk about that because I just think that's a really funny story, especially because we're about to read like what he's most known for. I felt like I needed to let you guys all know that story. So this is actually a very short book. It's only 218 pages long. So I'll probably read this in like a day, maybe two, depending on how busy I am. Also, I just want to say if you are new to my channel or if you're not new and you've been here for a while, you may know that I do these videos all the time where I read books for the first time and I share spoilers. I tell you everything that happens in the books. I share all of my reactions. And with this book in particular, I'm going to be doing things a little bit differently because with this book, it deals with a lot of hard hitting topics and sensitive issues. So when I'm going to be talking about the book and sharing my reactions, I don't want to go into too much detail about those particular topics because I don't want to trigger anyone that is watching this video. So without further ado, let's just get straight into here and let's start reading Perks Being a Wallflower by Stephen Shabosky. Okay, so I'm getting ready to start and when you take off the dust jacket, it has like this really stunning light blue underneath it. And also one of the things I really hope before I start reading this is like, it's called The Perks of Being a Wallflower. So I really hope once I've read this, I understand the perks of being a wallflower. Like I want to know why you would want to be a wallflower. Like what are the perks to it? I want to know. Anyways, gonna start, I'm so excited. Can't wait to see 
why this is such a popular book here we go we're starting okay so i'm literally only on page eight and so far the way this book is written is through letters i believe and they're always signed by charlie which i believe is the main character and so they're all written as letters and basically is he's just started high school and he doesn't really have any friends and stuff nothing too much has happened but also i want to give a trigger warning for suicide and discussions on suicide because it is on the first couple of pages of this book and I just want to talk about a quote that was at the very beginning and it's on literally page two so that the very first page of the whole book and all of the emails by the way are all addressed dear friend or at least they seem to be so far they all say dear friend so basically in the first letter that he writes it says so this is my life and I want you to know that I am both happy and sad and I'm still trying to figure out how that could be I don't know why but I read that and I was like wow that resonated that hit that hit differently. I really like that quote. I don't know what it is, but like it's so accurate because there is some times where you could just be so happy and so many think great things are going on in the world, but you can still feel so sad. Yeah, I really like that quote. Okay, I'm up to page 21 now, and guys, I already feel like this book is going to ruin me. Like, I actually already feel like it's going to absolutely ruin me because I'm already getting so attached to the main character, Charlie. He's so innocent and sweet and cute and I'm already loving him. He just wants friends. <laughs> he just I can't like he just literally wants friends and he just met these people called Patrick and Sam and Patrick was also called nothing like that was his name He was just called nothing which I thought was really funny but like he's gonna call him Patrick now because he got introduced and then we found out that Patrick and Sam are actually brother and sister or like stepbrother and stepsister and basically Charlie was happy about that because he was like oh I really like Sam so it's like good to know that they're not like in a relationship and stuff because then I have I could possibly ask Sam out in the future but then he says it would be very nice to have a friend again i would like that even more than a date <laughs> he just wants friends oh my god okay i'm on page 33 i just got the infinite quote that steven shabosky <laughs> signed in my book and i didn't know what it meant but now i do because basically sam Patrick and Charlie. They're basically like a three on now and they're in a car and stuff and Sam is driving the car Patrick's in the passenger seat and everything and there's music playing and stuff like that and literally it says Sam tapped her hand on the steering wheel Patrick held his hand outside the car and made airwaves So he was doing this like out the window and I just sat between them after the song finished I'd said something I feel infinite and Sam and Patrick looked at me like I said the greatest thing they ever heard because the song was that great and because we all really paid attention to it five minutes of a lifetime were truly spent and we felt young in a good way I've since bought the record and I would tell you that it w what it was but truthfully it's not the same unless you're driving to your first real party and you're sitting in the middle seat of a pickup with two nice people when it starts to rain I get it now like he's oh I get it. I get it. I get it. I love that quote. That's oh <laughs> I feel infinite. I do feel infinite. Wow. Ugh. This book is going to break me. Also, I do want to give some more trigger warnings and content warnings for rape and abuse. They are also in this book. I'm only on page 33, but those three topics have already came up and I do want those trigger warnings to be known because I think it's very important to look after yourself. Another thing I want to talk about really quick is the writing style of this book. So as I already said, the format of the book is written through a letter format where Charlie says, dear friend, and then tells you something. And then at the very end says, love always, Charlie. And why I'm liking this format so much is because Charlie is 15 years old and he just started high school and the way that he is writing the letters is as if he's writing it to someone that is older which is true because I'm reading this now 24 and I'm reading this so I am older than Charlie is in the book and constantly through his letters it's like he's speaking to you but also the very first letter I'm pretty sure he said he was writing to a particular person but we don't know who that is but it makes you feel like it's you he's talking to and then he constantly says stuff in the letters to like bring it back that he's talking to you and make it feel like that because he's at this party with Sam and Patrick and stuff and everyone's kind of like stoned right now and the guy who's like hosting the party is called Bob and he asks 
Charlie, would you like a brownie? And he says, yes, thank you. And in the letter he says, I was actually quite hungry because normally Sam and Patrick take me to the big boy after the football games. And I guess I was used to it by now. I ate the brownie and it tasted a little weird, but it was still a brownie, so I liked it. And then it says, which is what I mean, it brings it back like he's talking to you and it just reminds you of how innocent and how young he is. And I just think it's so well written. So it says, but this was not an ordinary brownie. Since you are older, I think you know what kind of brownie it was. Like, it's just the way that it's written. It's like he's talking to me, and I obviously am older, so the minute he was offered a brownie, I knew exactly what kind of brownie he was about to eat. I just think the way it's written is just so good, and how it, like, brings you into the story. It attaches you to Charlie because it feels like he's talking to you. He's calling you his friend. You're growing, like, this relationship with this fictional character in a way that just feels so real and you're like kind of looking at this juvenile person as if you're like their mentor kind of thing and you're looking at him being so innocent and not knowing things about the world and I am just finding it very endearing, very interesting. I don't think I've read many books like this with this kind of format where I felt like they're talking to me but I definitely just really enjoy how that is done and it's also just making me understand why this is probably on school curriculums is because of this exact format and now I'm feeling like am I analyzing this like I would if I was in school and I hate that for me because I definitely just want to read it for fun but I feel like that's how I'm analyzing it. Okay I did not think I would be stopping constantly to talk about things with this book like I'm literally on page 39 and I feel like I've vlogged so much already compared to how I would with any other book but basically what I, I just found out about the whole wallflower thing because basically Patrick was kissing this guy named Brad and Charlie found them but Brad doesn't want anyone to know so Charlie has to keep it quiet just because Brad doesn't want anyone to know about it. And then they're about to leave the party and stuff and Patrick says to one of their friends that isn't Charlie something like isn't he just so cool and then Patrick says he's a wallflower. You see things, you keep quiet about them, and you understand. So, I get what being a wallflower is now, and I get it. Like, once again, I just get it. And then after that, they are, like, at the homecoming dance or whatever, and I believe it's the part that I, is the only thing I have ever seen about this movie, because I always see it as, like, a gif on Twitter and stuff like that. And I believe it's the part where... Emma Watson like stands in the car like out with her head uh, the sunroof of the car and like they're driving through this tunnel or something and like I said that's like one of the only things I know about this whole book whole movie every that's like one of the only things I literally know about it because I always see that gif everywhere so that happens and they're like having fun they're listening to a song and they're saying that like when we got out of the tunnel Sam screamed this really fun scream and there it was downtown Lights on buildings and everything that makes you wonder. Sam sat down and started laughing. Patrick started laughing. I started laughing. And in that moment, I swear we were infinite. These quotes! I can't! They're, oh, I am loving that. Saying, oh, we are infinite. This is it. I love that. I am so late to understanding what it means, but... I love it. Okay guys, so I am now up to page 73 of Perks Being a Wallflower and where I am right now, basically they just had like this secret Santa party thing where Sam and Patrick were there and then also some of Sam and Patrick's friends and also Charlie was there and this is his first time doing like secret Santa and stuff and he gave presents to them all and he ended up making a mixtape for Patrick which I thought was so cute and like he was so thoughtful about all of the songs he picked and he was like I just really hope he enjoys all the songs and everything and I was like this is so adorable like it's so cute so innocent I think that's the thing about Charlie I just think he has such this air of innocence to him that I find so endearing and precious. And then the other thing I want to talk about is Patrick and his relationship with Brad because it deals with a lot with homophobia and internalized homophobia. So there is trigger warnings for that. But as I said, please check out the trigger warnings and content warnings for this book because there are several of them. And the way it's like dealt with is basically Patrick and Brad have sex for the first time. And Brad gets really upset about it after it happens because he has so much internalized homophobia inside of him. And he ends up getting taken back by 
by his parents and they like rehabilitate him and stuff like that then like the following year or whatever he goes back to school and he tells Patrick that he doesn't want anyone to ever know about it and it makes me really sad because he has this so much internalized homophobia inside of him and it makes me so sad and yeah so that's just what I wanted to talk about right now because I do think that Patrick and Brad's relationship is like it's very similar to like relationships I've seen or just heard about in the LGBT community and stuff from like people that I know, from personal experiences and stuff like that. So it definitely like hit me in a way when I read those parts and I could understand it and just like I sympathize with both of the characters. So yeah, that's where I am. I'm going to continue reading. I'll let you know how I get on, but I just wanted to talk about that. Okay guys, so I am up to page 98 now and I'm on part three of the book and so far I am liking it, as I already said, like, I like Charlie as a character, I find him very innocent and stuff like that, and I like the writing style, how it's true letters and stuff, but I don't really understand where it's going in terms of plot. But anyways, basically what just happened is there was a New Year's Eve party, because now it's 1992, and we also found out a thing about Charlie's aunt, which was Aunt Helen, which is like someone he's talked about several times throughout his letters, that is someone he was very attached to, had a very close relationship to, and we found out how she died. She died in a car accident, and Charlie loves her, and the way he talks about her and stuff is so adorable, and it made me like emotional, because I was like, oh my god, why is she like dead? Because I like wish he still had her as like a relationship and stuff. Okay, so for those of you who have already read the book and everything, imagine how stupid I feel editing this, hearing myself say what I just said about Aunt Helen. Oh no. That's basically all I can tell you that's happened since the last book to you. Sam and Patrick are still like his only really two friends and stuff and they went away for Christmas or whatever and he didn't get to see them, and that's about it. Okay, before I actually continue reading, I just realized something that I probably should have talked about, and that is because Charlie, like I said, the whole book, it's written through letters, and the very first page of like part three, it says like, oh, I just wrote down your address, and I found a stamp, and I mailed the letter. So, I should probably talk about who I think he's writing these letters to. From my guess, okay, this is a hunch, Bit of a hunch, right, okay? <laughs> I don't know, first of all, I really don't have any idea, but I'm just gonna hazard a guess, because at the st there was one part in this book where Sam mentioned writing things, so I'm like, is this like a future version of Charlie or something? Because it seems like Sam is the one that gave him the idea to write letters in the first place, so, I think he's writing letters to Patrick, but I, as I said, I could be completely wrong. That's just my like prediction. I think he's writing letters to Patrick and Sam was the one who gave him the idea because I, I wish I found, I remember the page it was on, but like she said something at one point about writing things down and I was like, oh, so she's obviously the one who gave him the idea to write letters because at the very start of the book, Hold on, we're flipping back. I'm writing to you because she said you listen and understand and didn't try to sleep with that person at that party even though you could have. So, wait, I'm gaslighting myself right now. I'm gonna doubt on myself. Okay, we're just gonna keep going because I'm probably wrong thinking it's Sam and Patrick anyways, so. I just thought I needed to talk about that, but I'm definitely wrong. A few moments later. Okay guys. Things are starting to click in my old noggin because Charlie in, just said in the letter, I just kept quiet and look around and I noticed things, the dots on the ceiling or how the blanket they gave me was rough or how the doctor's face looked rubbery or how everything was a deafening whisper when he said that maybe I should start seeing a psychiatrist again. First time a doctor ever told that to my parents with me in the room and his coat was so white and I was so tired. So clearly something happened and that's why he's writing the letters. So the plot is me trying to figure out what happened to make him write the letters. It's all clicking now, folks. I found out the plot of the book. Okay, guys, so I have now gone up to page 142. I literally have 70 something pages left of it, and I'm up to part four. And basically what just happened is Charlie kind of had like this girlfriend named Mary Elizabeth, and basically, him and her like went on dates and stuff. They went to like this first Sadie Hawkins dance kind of thing. And Charlie di wasn't really like liking her so much because he's so in love with Sam. And then there is a truth or dare party. What is with all of these books that I read and truth or dare? It's in this one and it was in after and we all know how it goes down in after. But anyways, they do truth or dare and basically Patrick, I believe, dares Charlie 
to kiss the prettiest girl in the room. And Charlie ends up kissing Sam, which obviously upsets Mary Elizabeth. Charlie like calls her to say sorry and stuff, but she says it's too little too late and all that kind of thing. And then right at the end of part three, it basically says, after a week of not talking to anyone, I finally called Bob. I know that's wrong, but I didn't know what else to do. I asked him if he had anything I could buy. He said he had a quarter ounce of pot left. So I took some of my Easter money and I bought it. I've been smoking it all the time since. So there's something really going on with Charlie and I just don't know what it is. I really can't figure it out. I feel like that's probably the reveal that makes everyone cry and is like the emotional section. So I know it's coming and here we go. Okay guys, so something just happened. It was actually really sad and hard to read because Basically, Brad's dad found Brad and Patrick kissing each other and stuff happened. And then we didn't see Brad for a while. Like, he just, we didn't know where he was. And Charlie thought maybe he was after being sent to, like, military school or something. And then he comes back to the school one day and he just doesn't speak to Patrick or anything. And then they're at lunch and stuff and he calls Patrick a very homophobic word. And so they end up having a fight and stuff like that. And it was really hard to read. There was just a lot to read and that was a lot to take in. I just wanted to talk about that because I really truly love Patrick. And it's also saying that like him and Charlie are getting closer now because of how he like helped Patrick during that situation and stuff. They're like growing closer now. And I just love that because I just feel like they need that friendship. And I'm also just really worried something bad is gonna happen. Okay, so now where I am, basically I'm up to page 175. Basically Patrick and Sam, Mary Elizabeth and his Charlie's sister have all like graduated school now. And they're all left because they were all seniors and stuff. So Charlie's kind of dealing with that and like how he has like no friends now because they're all left school and stuff. And it's prom night. And during that part where he's talking about prom night and stuff, he talks about his psychiatrist and how his psychiatrist keeps asking him about stuff from when he was younger and he's getting angry so I don't, I don't understand what he keeps asking me about when I was younger so I'm assuming something happened when he was younger and then also at the very end of that letter he says I hope the DJ is as good as everyone said I was last Friday and I hope everyone's pictures turn out great and never become old photographs and nobody gets in a car accident. I really hope that was not foreshadowing and someone's about to be in a car accident. I really hope that was not foreshadowing and someone's about to get in a car accident. Okay everyone, so it's actually the next day and I have finished The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Shabosky and I didn't vlog straight away after I finished it because I'm trying to like come to terms with how I think and how I feel about this book because when I finished it, I was kind of like, did I? like that or what like because i definitely didn't hate it or anything like definitely did not hate it because i already talked too much about the writing style and how i loved that aspect and everything of it like i was trying to figure out what my thought was like did i think you're okay or did i think wow you're really good so i said i'd just sleep on it and let myself think and like mull over all of my thoughts and now i have them and so that's why i'm here to give you my conclusion and everything to the book so overall i think i would give this book a three and a half stars out of five on goodreads that's what i would rate it but i would probably round it up because if you know about goodreads they don't do like half stars and stuff you have to say like three or four you can't do like half so i would probably round it up to the four star because it's definitely more four star than it is three because i'm either like 3.5 stars or 3.75 stars that's how i think about this book and the main reason is because of all of the different quotes in here and like I literally loved so many of the quotes like I said already the way that this book is written and in terms of like letter format is another reason why I liked it so much I love that it's written that way and I love that it's told through this character who's so innocent and like oblivious to things in the world and I just found it so unique and such an interesting story to read about and like I said earlier on in this vlog I was like oh my god I need to try to figure out who he's writing these letters to we don't actually find out who he does write them to and I don't think it's really important or like you need to know who it is because I kind of like how it's open for interpretation and you could like see that he's writing to whoever you want it to be. And at the end of the day also, does it even matter who he's writing it to? Because of everything that he went through, it's kind of like the letters are his therapy and like how he expresses his thoughts and expresses his feelings and deals with his trauma that he went through as a child and so for that reason i think it's not really important to know who he's actually writing the letters to whoever you think he's writing the letters to 
I don't think there's a wrong answer. Like, I think it's open for anyone to interpret it the way they want to. For me personally, as I said earlier on in this vlog as well, it felt like he was writing it to me. Like, I thought I was his friend that he was writing to. Like, I felt it was very personal and I felt like he was talking to me. And I think that's why I connected so much to Charlie because you have that letter format and the way he's talking and it's like dear friend and it keeps referring to how oh you must be older and all this kind of stuff and it just makes it feel like he's speaking to you and you're his friend he's telling you all of these things it feels like it's you he's talking to and it just brings this whole new level of like personalness to it and i think that is amazing and it's so beautifully written and well done having said all that the reason why i'm like oh this is not like five stars for me is because i did find the story to be a little bit boring at parts like i don't know what i was expecting and i kind of just thought that it was kind of like a coming of age story kind of thing and like it'd be similar to like something like uh love simon all of those kind of movies like where it has like that feel good feeling. I just thought that's what I was getting myself into which it's not really that because I think it's just a lot more to deal with Charlie and how he is coping with this traumatic experience that he went through as a child and like suddenly coming back to the realization as to what happened to him when he had suppressed so much of that memory and it finally just comes back to him and it's very upsetting. I did actually cry but that does not mean it was not sad because it was because when you find out what it is that happened it's very sad and it, it actually breaks your heart it's just such a horrible thing that he went through and it truly is devastating especially the way it's written i'm not going to go into too much about what it is that's revealed but if you've read the book yourself you know so i just want to say there is a trigger warning and content warning for child molestation in here and that's all i'm going to say especially because earlier in the book i talked about how much i loved aunt helen and stuff and yeah, like I feel so stupid for saying that now at the beginning and I just had no idea what was coming. I am actually gonna go watch the movie for this because I actually, when I was like trying to decide what my thoughts are about and like let myself brew on the thoughts, I started looking at reviews on the internet and stuff and I saw a lot of people say that the movie is better, which I do think sometimes can happen. Like sometimes the movie can be better. For example, when I read the After series, I think the movies are better because the movies take out all of the problematic stuff that's in the books. But I did see that Stephen Shabosky either wrote this script or he directed it, or maybe he did both. So the fact that like Stephen Shabosky had such a huge role in the movie, that interests me when people say that it's better than the book because the author himself has such a big aspect to the movie. So I am gonna go watch the movie and I'm going to include vlog clips now from when I watched the movie. Okay, before I continue watching, I'm literally like a few minutes into it, but Elena from The Vampire Diaries is in this. I didn't realize that she was also in this movie. I knew like some of the other cast, like the major cast, but I did not know Elena from Vampire Diaries was in this. A few moments later. <laughs> I'm not okay. The movie's so much sadder than the book or something. I don't know. It just hit a lot harder. Wow. A few moments later. <laughs> it just ended and I'm crying again. We are infinite. Wow. <laughs> I'm such a mess. I think I prefer the movie to the book. But they're both so beautiful in their own way. But I think I prefer the movie. So yeah, I think that's going to be it for this vlog. I think that's everything I wanted to say about the perks being a wallflower. I definitely understand why this is loved so much and why it is so many people's favourite book. I completely understand it. I get it makes complete sense to me. Just for me personally, I was a little bit bored at parts, so that's the only reason why it's not like something that was absolutely amazing to me. So like I said, this is either a 3.5 slash 3.75 rating for me, so I did enjoy it, I do think it's good, and I definitely would recommend it because I do think that this is a book that like, I know other people will enjoy more than I do because this is just like a personal preference and stuff, so yeah. And I also keep saying that as if like I didn't like it. I did like it, it's just I know other people probably like it way more than I do. So yeah, finally I've read The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Steven Shabosky and I understand the quote that he signed in my imaginary friend. So yeah, that is going to be it guys for this video. Let me know down below in the comments what you think of The Perks of Being a Wallflower. Do you actually prefer the movie over the book? Let me know because I'm very interested by that whole discourse about the movie being better than the book. I find that so fascinating so please let me know where you fall in that like do you think the movie's better do you think the book's better i would love to know but other than that that is going to be it for this video and i shall see you all next time in my next one so goodbye guys oh my God,